Joe here, Psychedelics Today. Really appreciate you tuning in again. Today on the show, we have Cherie Malcolm Gadassi, the psychedelic integration coach. We got to meet up with her at the recent Psychedelic Science Conference and had a great time. Great person. Uh, we have an awesome conversation here discussing everything from integration, providing integration services, holotropic breathwork, how powerful that can be. And I think we get into you know what happens when maybe people do too much psychedelics and uh, how to how to get back in your body how to feel normal again Uh, because sometimes it can be really an alienating experience especially when repeated and uh, repeated too often we really hope you enjoy it it was super fun talking to sheree and uh, i think we're going to get an interview with sheree for our psychedelic self-care and integration course so that should be really cool enrollment for that psychedelic self-care and integration course will wrap up pretty soon. I think we're going to cut off sales this Friday, maybe. So if you want to get it at the $50 price that we have it up there for, better jump on it. The next round will be a little more money, but it'll be a lot more valuable. Check that out. If you have any questions, let us know. You know how to reach us through our Facebook group or website. Also, email psychedelics today, email at gmail.com. It is festival season, so it is time to get educated on how to be safe with these substances, how to tell others you know, what the best practices are, how not to get hurt or sick. There are some recent articles out there on fentanyl being in cocaine. So 20 people at a party ODing somewhere from using cocaine for a very opposite reaction. I don't know if anybody died, but that's pretty bad. We just posted an article the other day about a lot of drug users being tested positive for fentanyl without ever having uh, knowingly used it. Uh, It was laced in the drugs they were using and came out in the drug panel tests in their urine. So we're not saying drug testing kits are (laughs) going to get that. I think you need a mass spectrometer to rule out fentanyl, but you can rule out a lot of other things like 2,5-IN bomb or other, um, you know, various chemicals that don't have a long and a proven safety record that that you want to conform to. So go to Dance Safe and pick up a test kit. I think that's really a good idea. Uh, announcements. Kyle and I will be in the Northeast in early June hanging out with the Boston Entheogenic Network. Uh, I think I'm going to do a talk on Sunday in Boston and maybe Lowell, Massachusetts. Kyle, I think, is doing some breath work and uh, maybe some drumming, shamanic drumming kind of stuff. And... That should be really neat. Also, I have a bunch of breathwork workshops coming up. Really excited about this weekend's workshop. Still some spots left if you want to come. It's in Breckenridge, Colorado, May 21. It's a full-day workshop out here. So that should be pretty awesome. Also have a few others. There's a June 4, July 8, and August 6 workshop in Breckenridge. I've also got a really cool three-day um, well, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So yeah, I guess that's three days. Um, workshop in Lyons, Colorado, a little north of Boulder. And uh, it's up on a nice ranch. And um, I think it's going to last about three. Yeah, we'll do breath work one day. And um, my form, so Dream Shadow Transpersonal Breath Work. We'll also do some rebirthing style breath work. What are we calling it? Conscious breath work. And also a lady called Gunjasana who does some really interesting yoga and marijuana work and also some kind of ecological advocacy along with that should be really cool. We're doing some sound healing and a fire ceremony. I'm not sure what that means yet, but uh, I'm sure I'll find out when I'm there. And um, I think we're providing all the food and I'm going to be camping, which is really cool. Really excited about that. So that's really it for uh, announcements on my end. I think Kyle will be hanging out in Vermont for the next month, um, cruising all over, interviewing folks, and doing some breath work at the Gibsons at Dream Shadow. Check those workshops out at dreamshadow.com. That's enough for now. Um, If you haven't heard about transpersonal breath work, you really owe it to yourself. It's a slightly rebranded version of holotropic breath work. It's the same format. We've got loads of experience working with people and we are students of Stan Groff for sure. So, ooh, 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 almost forgot. If you get this in the next few days, we're doing a 10-book giveaway plus 
a DVD and a seat to our psychedelic self-care and integration course. Um, the full one that's coming up, uh, that we'll announce soon. The books are a whole bunch of Groff books. We're giving away PCAL by Ann and Sasha Shulgin, Psychedelic Explorer's Guide by Fadiman, LSD My Problem Child by Albert Hoffman, and a signed copy of The Brotherhood of the Screaming Abyss, My Life with Terrence McKenna by his brother, Dennis McKenna. Really cool book, signed copy. To enter, visit our website, and there's a link at the top. It says Psychedelic, Ultimate Psychedelic Book Giveaway. Click that. You can put in your email. Share it with your friends to get more chances to win. Uh, you can share it all over social too to get more people to subscribe. And we really appreciate it. We really appreciate you guys loving us. And uh, we're loving how many people we have on Facebook now. I think we're up to like 1,300. I just really appreciate you guys checking us out and supporting us. If you do want to support us, join this contest. Or if you don't want to, maybe leave us a review on iTunes. Again, thank you all for tuning in and... See you on the next episode. Bye. Welcome to Psychedelics Today with your hosts, Kyle and Joe. Today we're here with Sheree Malcolm Gadassi. Uh, Sheree and I met at, from some of the MAPS calls that we were having about integration. And then uh, we also just met up at the MAPS conference and had a nice integration lunch. And so it's great to have you on and talk about what you're doing. Uh, you're also known as a psychedelic integration coach, correct? Yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, let's uh, chat just a, briefly about the conference. Um, was anything st anything stand out for you while you were there? The last MAPS conference, absolutely. Yeah. So I was fortunate enough to be able to sign up for the entire conference, including the pre and post offerings that they had. And... I had a, been having a dream uh, throughout my academic life, which is very long lived, about a year and a half, uh, of meeting Stan Groff, which is one of my idols because I'm very much into transpersonal and spiritual psychology. And he, he provided a two day holotropic breath workshop. And the biggest, my biggest takeaway from the entire conference, even though it was six days long for me, was having a chance to sit with him as he was literally on his hands and knees when I was doing my holotropic breathing. And I remember him looking at me and staring at me with such compassion in his eyes. And it felt as if I was the only person in the world and the things he was talking to me about felt like it was the last conversation he will ever have. <laughs> so just having that beautiful connection with his entire focus and energy on me really reminded me of what medicine is. Um, and why we're doing this work that the re real medicine is all about human connection and supporting one another. Mm. And it was uh, a very profound and beautiful experience for me that I'm really still trying to cultivate and integrate every day in my everyday relationship. So I really loved that reminder. And this mm. great, great man. The real medicine is about human connection. I, you posted something about that the other day. That was it. The, mm. the ultimate psychedelic is other people. <laughs> the ultimate drug. Yes, human. Like, yes. Oh, goodness gracious, what a beautiful thing. Um, Why do we forget that? You know. <laughs> Why do we? Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, were yeah. you able to? Were you able to jump in on any talks or were you kind of, uh, I know I was kind of fried just chatting with everybody and I, I was volunteering so I didn't get to see too much, but was there any talk that stood out for you there? Yeah, I, I try to run around to as many talks as possible, which I think in hindsight was a mistake a little bit because a lot of the idea behind, the big idea behind conventions is the networking and again, meeting and connecting, uh, which I've definitely had a lot of that as well, thankfully, but one talk that particularly stood out for me, well, a few of them. Uh, Mark uh, Ashala, I think his last name is, from ICRS, which gave mm. a talk about integration, um, as well as the one-day integration workshop, of course, that they had at the end. I found it extremely useful to uh, work with other integration specialists in the field. Tanya Mate, uh, Julie Megler from Erie and the guys over at the New York Institute. 
And I loved learning from these different professionals because they each bring a different type of experience to the field and different academic backgrounds and accreditation. So I thought it was really neat to see how each and every one of these professionals work. And I definitely learned a lot. So I think I think my favorite part was actually the integration workshop, if anything. Yeah, I took a lot out of that and was able to implement a lot of the, a lot of the techniques with my clients already. So that oh, was great. awesome. Cool. <laughs> That's fascinating how quickly you could actually adapt that stuff because that was only a handful of weeks ago. It's great. Um, mm. mm-hmm. I have not talked to Tanya Mate, but she seems really interesting in that she's doing a lot of ayahuasca work um, currently because, uh, like, you know, obviously her father, Gabor Mate, is really interesting, but he, he can't do... Father-in-law. 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 I did not know that. That's good to know. Thank you for clarifying. Mm-hmm. He... Um, can't really yes. do too much ayahuasca work because the Canadian government threatened his licensure or something. So it's, it's cool. The daughter can. Um, and I, I think she's probably, you know, quite brilliant, even though I haven't really heard anything about her. But can you, can you tell us like, was there anything in particular in the integration, um, seminar that was gold for you? Sure. Well, if, if you want to talk about Tanya specifically, I would love to. I don't know her too well, although no, I definitely have an intention. Okay. It, well, so again, my one of my biggest learnings from the workshop was actually by Tanya, mm. which, yes, she does ayahuasca integration. She's one of the only ones that I'm at least aware of in our field that particularly works with the medicine. Mm-hmm. And this is, since this is something that I try to offer as well, one of my services as a, psych, as a psychedelic and integration coaches, I do offer ayahuasca preparation and integration services. Um, I personally have been working with this mother plant only for a couple of years, so I'm very new uh, to the field but uh, or to, to working with this medicine. But I remember from the first time that I drank, my life has just changed in so many ways that um, I just knew that this this is something that was very needed and I really wanted to be able to offer it um, even as a peer to others that are undergoing all these circles and experiences. So here in Los Angeles, we, you know, obviously ayahuasca can be drank across the jungle. You fly out of the U.S. and engage in all these ceremonies. But the reality is that many individuals drink here in the United States, especially in L.A., where a lot of circles take place. So many people in our community that undergo profound experiences with this medicine and don't have anyone to speak with. Uh, So what I loved learning from Tanya at the workshop, Tanya works at the Temple of the Way of Light, which is in Peru, and she is integration specialist there. And she takes a lot after her father-in-law, Gabor, which his entire philosophy, as far as I understand it, is working around childhood trauma, childhood early development trauma early developmental childhood trauma and really understanding that the medicines bring up, especially ayahuasca, bring up a lot of those core issues from our youth that need to be dealt with. So it's all about feelings. So, you know, if someone, for example, has a, you know, comes out of an ayahuasca experience with completely incoherent, has an ineffable experience that is difficult to put into words, it feels like they're all over the place, the idea behind it, the integration, is to really try and see how they feel about it or what feelings came up and even how they're feeling at the moment while they're trying to explain this ceremony to you and and take it from there. Like what core feelings come up? Mm. Yeah. And the core feelings that Tanya specifically mentioned is, is uh, being uh, the core feelings that we work around are joy, pain, anger, um shame guilt and one more i think maybe one more that i'm forgetting but ev- basically everything goes d- boils down to to one of these core feelings that haven't perhaps haven't been resolved in our youth that need resolution and healing now hmm. yeah it's really interesting uh, when you're talking <laughs> Yeah, when you're talking about uh-huh. that, it makes, it makes me think about like some of the gruff, like the coax themes, you know, and like those breathwork mm-hmm. realms. You might just have this common feeling or theme of be- feeling shame, you know, or, or anger, and it has all these roots in different places. So yeah, that's interesting. 
Right. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's just amazing how, you know, as children, everyone, all of us come into this world with, with an ability to feel, obviously, that's what our life experience or our human condition is about. It's about feelings. Now, energy, energy that passes through our body manifests through us as feelings. And if we don't allow ourselves to feel, then the energy gets trapped in our body and man and then becomes tra trauma that's trapped in our body. So I know that you guys are really into transformational breath work. And the idea is to get um, the oxygen flowing through your body to move through all those areas in the body to, that are stuck and and um, have those feelings trapped in there. So really move them through and get them out. Isn't that right? The Groff quote we like, well, I think Kyle likes it too, is the full expression of any emotion is the funeral pyre of that thing. So yeah. if you can <laughs> fully express that uh -huh. thing, that thing Pretty is uh, resolved <laughs> semi-permanently at least, mm. you know, if not fully. And it's... Uh, it's kind of true. It's kind of like Ramda saying like, you know, you, you can't necessarily get rid of these neurosis neuroses permanently, but you can get into a much better relationship to them. A lot less pain as a result. Um, so right. I, I like identify with both ways. I don't, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. And I think about that Groff quote, it's like, um, you know, m we might keep emotions inside and to fully like experience that maybe in a breathwork session, like just fully experiencing some of that anger and letting it out, you know, it can be transformative because um, maybe you've never felt that you just kind of bottled it up. And I remember this uh, psychiatrist once said, it's like, I don't get angry. I grow tumors. <laughs> So, oh you know, oh. you know, because like we just we, we keep everything inside. And so to be able to express that negative emotion fully can help get it out. You exactly. Know? Exactly. It's all about it's all about uh, expression and permission yeah. be, to be given the permission to express. Yeah. And ayahuasca works in that way that she, she forces you to express it. She forces you you to feel it and integration specifically which is what i'm trying to support people with is about giving people permission to 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 talk about their experience to to witness their experience to bring up whatever came up without having to be coherent or make sense of anything just give them the space to feel and to be and to to be heard mm. um, and that's really the idea behind being an integration coach which is why we're speaking so yeah <laughs> Awesome. Let's jump back a little bit and um, let's talk about how you got into this. I know you have a master's degree and your concentration was in psychedelic integration therapy. So I'm kind of curious how you got involved and how did you end up concentrating in psychedelic integration? That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for asking that. So um, the way that I got into the psychedelic feel to begin with was I don't like to use the word accident because nothing is an accident, but it was definitely not something that I ever planned. I originally in my undergrad studied uh, cre uh, creative education. I was a teacher and I was also a marketing director for a cosmetics company for a while. And a few years ago, when I re just moved back to the U.S. after a while of living in Israel, which is where I was born, I lived there for a few years and decided to come back. Uh, this is where my family lives in here in LA and was kind of looking for my community and my crew and new, new people to hang out with. And I really got into the f transformational festival scene mm. and started very sporadically, although always mindfully, very sporadically experimenting with substances and until one time that I was at a festival and a friend uh, provided me with a little sack of what I think was MDMA and said, okay, you can use some of it. Don't use all of it. And then sure enough, the entire, the entire packet poured into my drink. Oh, geez. And, and I was like, okay, water here is really expensive. I really want to drink this water. <laughs> so I ended up drinking the entire bottle and lo and behold, I ended up having one, the, probably the most transformational event of my life. Um, which was absolutely beautiful, but again, I was very new to to psychedelic use to begin with, so um, it was really mind-boggling. I had no idea how to wrap my head around it, 
And then the months that came later, everything started changing pretty rapidly in my life. A series of events that, again, everything was, I believe, was completely planned. Um, one of these events was a traumatic breakup that I had. And without any previous spiritual background or uh, any spiritual practices, I was just in such a low place that I felt like I needed to do something to, to make me feel better. And I just started meditating out of the mm. blue and started meditating. And within a couple of times that I did that, I started doing breath work mm. while I was meditating. And then all of a sudden I had a, an incredible transformation. What I now understand was a holotropic holotropic state of consciousness that when I woke up from that, I woke up like a new person, literally. My, everything that I knew about my past was done. And I woke up a new person that just knew with all of her heart and being and soul that I have to support people who do psychedelics. Mm. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, even telling the story sounds sometimes so crazy to me, but, you know, that's that was the reality for me. And, and immediately everything in my life, again, just kept changing I immediately signed up for grad school to study psychology. I knew I wanted to be a psychedelic psychotherapist and just started meeting all the right people at the right time, started volunteering in the community, um, went to a conference, which was here in LA last year called Visionary Convergence, which is where I met my husband also. Um, so it was that life changing and at visionary convergence, there were a few speakers that completely blew my mind. One of them was Julie Megler mm. from Erie, who spoke about the concept of integration. The other one also from the Bay Area, Susanna Bustos, who also speaks, talks and works with integration and just sitting there and under, you know, trying to figure out, I was still again, very new in the world of psychedelics and trying to figure out, okay, what do I want to contribute in this world? Psychedelic therapy will be legal in a few years, thank God. MDMA is about to be legal, but it's still not. So what can I do in the meantime? And integration really spoke to me because it felt like there is so much use, but people are not really, perhaps are not aware that there's a lot of work to be done with them, with these substances to um, use them for psycho-spiritual growth and well-being and Basically, that we have a gap in our medical system that uh, a gap or just the medical system does not plainly and clearly does not support individuals who use psychedelics, even though millions and millions of people use them every year. So listening to Susanna and and Julie, I just, you know, understood that what they're doing is absolutely incredible. I'm totally inspired and I want to I want to this is what I want to do. This is this is what I need to do. And simultaneously. Uh, my friend Ashley, who is also uh, another lioness in the field of of the psych of psychedelics here in LA, we decided to join forces and co-founded the first integration organization here in Los Angeles called Inner Space Integration, and started running community circles and took it from there. And simultaneously, while I was in grad school. So I was really lucky, um, and this is perhaps something that we want we might want to talk about because I do get asked about this so often. Where did you study what you do? Where did you study psychedelics? What school teaches psychedelics? <clears throat> Send me there. <laughs> um, and again, I do want to emphasize that um, our huge need to surrender to just what happens in our lives and just say yes. And again, mm -hmm. everything that's happened to me has brought me to where I am. And my my going to grad school on that string of events of just like things that started happening to me, I was looking for a school where I could go back to school, study, get my master's in psychology as soon as possible. And I found a school in L.A. called Antioch University, which at the time, little did I know, they were a super liberal um, social justice type of school. And they had a program called Master's in Psychology individualized concentration, which basically you can pick out a theme or a topic to your, you know, a field to your heart's desire, and you supplement the regular master's in psych with independent study and research and in the field that you wish to, to specialize in. And so that's what I did. I, 
I again by chance, quote unquote, met someone who was a re- who's who's now the head of Crossroads Ibogaine Clinic in Mexico, Dr. Joseph Barzuglia, the amazing Dr. Joseph Barzuglia, who at the time was a clinical research director, and I started assisting him on uh, various uh, research that he was um, working on, and so I did that. And uh, then we opened Inner Space, and I also did a, I got a coaching certificate through Being True to You, which I can't recommend enough. Uh, this uh, program is mainly focused on addiction recovery, but they also do psycho-spiritual integration because they primarily cater to individuals who have, who, to ad- addicts who use ibogaine therapy to recover. So they offer to them psychedelic integration. So I studied with Deanne, which now I work with as well. Uh, and that was an incredible um, supplement to to my knowledge because, you know, when I was trying to make my way and really um, root down and, and my master's degree and really, you know, trying to make it as legit as possible, you know, there isn't – integration is such a new field that there isn't a lot of material on it at all not a lot not books no papers nothing so when i wrote my masters on psychedelic integration therapy i felt like i had a huge responsibility to really back up the idea of integration with um you know as many as much psychology theory as i possibly could find that i felt related to it so i backed it up a lot with jungian theory which i'm very connected to with transpersonal psychology obviously stan Groff, uh existential psychology, um, learned from Claudio Naranjo and, um, really just trying to, to do, I just did, you know, did a lot of leg work and, um, to prove quote unquote, what the academics want is, you know, everything is proof. So I wrote an excellent paper that I'm super proud of and I was legit. (laughs) So that's how I got my master's in psychology. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Who is Claudio? That's how I got into school. Claudio Naranjo, actually, he also spoke at, at the uh, at the conference. He gave a couple of talks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he was uh, another elder in the field. Yeah, Chilean psychiatrist, right? And he's oh, he's the guy yes. you wanted to talk to, yes. Kyle. We spoke about him a few times. Oh. Yeah, I did not catch any of his stuff on stage, um, unfortunately. Thankfully, I hope it's on YouTube. Yeah, I think it. I, I hope so too. Um, yeah, that, that's really great. And I think um, a lot of people don't always take advantage of the individualized or independent studies in their programs. And I think that's a really great way to go about studying some of this stuff. Because even in my undergrad, I did a lot of this. And my undergrad school was very liberal, but also had a lot of uh, independent studies. So I, I remember in 2013, I made an independent study to go out to the MAPS conference and wrote a bunch of papers mm. and, did a, and did a summary. And um, so, yeah, that's really awesome. Was your was your program clinical? Um, so did it lead towards licensure or? So thanks so much for asking, because this is a topic that has been, um, has taken up a lot of my energy in the last year. So originally, when I decided to go back to school, I had my intention was to get my master's and then go and get my license through a, a PhD clinical psych. So to get licensed through my through my doctorate degree. And so I did not do a my master's is not clinical because, again, I wanted to get my hours later. Mm-hmm. And then what ended up happening uh, <laughs> by virtue of uh of again, just a lot of lessons in, in self growth and humility and, and owning my personal abilities and the whole field of integration, just again, being so nascent. Um, I fairly recently made a decision to actually not become licensed. I, so while I was in school, I was accepted um, provisionally to be on the therapist team for the Los Angeles site for the phase three MDMA assisted psychotherapy trials. And I was the only one on the team that was not licensed. Now, even though everyone knew that I was not licensed, there wasn't a problem because I know that in Colorado, there are quite a few um, others that are taken into the team as, you know, professionals in the field or whatnot. And what ended up happening was quite interesting because even though, again, I was supposed to start my doctorate this year to eventually become licensed 
uh, I immediately started experiencing a lot of pushback from others in the field that were licensed and who felt that it was inappropriate that I was on on the um, on the team, and which um, you know it was obviously caused me to do a lot of thinking about you know who I am and what I can offer and what maybe what I cannot offer as well and what are really going to be my main contrib- contributions to the field? Do I really want to be an academic? Do I want to be a teacher, uh, which I also wanted to be? I wanted to teach at university. Do I want to offer workshops or do I really want to offer one-on-one integration? Like, what is it that I want to do? Do I want to write a book? Um, so, so many things to offer. Do I want to be in the trials? Uh, so I really got into this just like self-exploration journey about my gifts and um the more that I started to do that, I also started working more with people. And from the feedback that I got from my clients, which, you know, clients and community are, are best teachers, um, I actually learned that, that there is perhaps more room even for those who are not clinicians in this field because many people that do or that do psychedelic work or entheogenic work there is a part of them that is feeling a bit reserved still um, by um, approaching a licensed individual because the individ- professionals who are licensed have to abide by laws of ethics and conduct in their field, and um, they also have to abide to um, to um, sorry, what did I want to say? They wanted to they need to abide to diagnosis, right? And to me, as a coach, this is not something that I have to do at all. On the contrary, I'm, I'm working as a paraprofessional, as a peer. So a lot of individuals that perhaps need the help don't approach therapists because they don't want to be diagnosed. Now, individuals who use psychedelics, you know, oftentimes, obviously, psychedelics can cause or are in a way, by definition, they're a state of psychosis. And... If they, you know, just so happen to turn to a clinician who is not well versed in with altered states of consciousness, they can easily be diagnosed as, you know, name at least five mental health disorders from the from the diagnostic statistics manual manual. I actually came to realize that for me, it actually seems better to not get licensed. And I recently made that decision to fully to not be licensed and get my PhD, which is not clinical, and continue working again as a coach and as a peer, because I feel that people relate to me better in that way, and they feel safer, safer to uh, to really be open and authentic with everything that they're going through without um, fearing that, you know, anything that they say will backfire on them. Um, and then that's just, again, what I'm finding from my my experience that I've had so far working in this profession and not to say that sometimes I'm not triggered. I do remember sitting at the conference and Rick Doblin in his opening speech was presenting his, uh, psychedelic psychotherapist ID that, you know, everyone hopefully will get one day in the future. And I was sitting there thinking, my goodness, am I making a huge mistake again by not deciding to not be licensed? But no, actually, again, the affirmations that I keep receiving, not just from, Again, my clients, my surroundings, the universe, whoever it is, I know that for me, it's better to not become licensed. And I'm very happy to be able to serve people in that way. So there is room for everyone, you know. And if I do feel that, you know, if I do get clients that I feel definitely need or could use the help of a, a professional that can direct them with um with specific therapeutic interventions that I'm not able to offer, I refer them out. So it's all about also knowing where to, you know, what you are able to to deal with and what you're not and um, just really distinguish your your services and and just stick to that. So that's been really useful for me. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that. Cause we, we, we've definitely had some people reach out to us in the past asking like, how do I get involved in this? And yeah, it's always, I think it's such an individualized and personal choice. You know, I, I know I had that, uh, debate for like a few years when I was applying to grad school, I'm like, do I just want to get my master's and then in psychology and not do the clinical thing? And so I just want to do coaching and yeah, it's a constant back and forth. And I think it's very personal and individualized on what you want to do. 
Yeah. Right. And again, and the, the beautiful thing is that there is room for everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, there will be a million different types of coaches, even if they all do the exact same thing. People gravitate towards different people. They gravitate towards different energies. So, you know, even clinicians and coaches can work together in many ways. So, you know, I think the what's really important to, to learn, and this is something that I learned actually just very recently, you know, with, and I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm super happy and proud of my, you know, the, the what accreditations I do have, which is, again, a master's in psychology and I have a coaching certificate. And, and even though, you know, there are not too many of us doing integration right now, but I actually feel that only recently I really learned what integration was and I learned it through my own experience. I like true integration, right? Um, there were a couple of months we, very recently where I was doing a lot more medicine work than usual. Um, it was the course of a very short time where I did like, I think eight ayahuasca ceremonies, experimented with LSD, MDMA, did a couple of rounds of combo frog and mm. um, other shamanic medicines and just all these things were happening at once. And I just felt this just huge opening and, and, my growth and the the lessons that I've been receiving to a point that it was just really overwhelming, uh, really overwhelming that I couldn't even sit down and do my daily meditation because I mm. felt so triggered by everything that was rising to the surface. So I decided to take a break from my daily integration practices. And what ended up happening was for about a month that I was again kind of shunning it off because I was, you know, I just like, I couldn't take it. I just really wanted to shut the entire psychedelic field down and just so I can ground. Mm. And during this, this month that I couldn't, again, do my usual practices, I just felt, started feeling very, the other, the opposite thing happened very ungrounded, very disconnected. My relationships were starting to suffer. My relationship with my husband started to suffer. Uh, a lot of anger started coming up, you know, not really feeling focused in, in my, my work and the projects that I'm working on. And, you know, it took me um, a while to, to just, you know, force myself to, okay, just like slow down, you have to go back to basics, back to basics, which is again, your daily, the daily practices. This is my safe place that I always go back to amidst the madness that is happening, right? The madness, which is all the lessons, the the demands or daily life, which can get so crazy. So I always go back to basics and, and only once I started doing that and I started to feel like myself again, I really learned that that's what integration is that, you know, if you're, if you're not taking the time and investing the time in yourself to remember who you are and remember why you're here and connect to your, your personal God, your higher self and your purpose and your relationships, again, all about relationships, then Mm -hmm. there's, there's really nothing left, you know? So that's when I really just learned what integration was. When I stopped integrating, that's when I learned what integration was. Right. Yeah. Like, always kind of come back to that chop wood, carry water. You know, we could yes, exactly. sometimes continue yeah. to do these spiritual practices and, you know, maybe that's what integration is. But yeah, for me lately, it's just like chop wood, carry water. Like, how do you just go about and just live life after a really transformative experience without staying out in the ether and the clouds? Right. So um, one of the one of the main techniques that I use, utilize for integration is what I call the daily anchor methods. So basically for me, um, I really try to practice self-care every day in the morning. I'm a morning person, so I like to kind of set my stage in the morning first thing. Otherwise, I never get to it. So I wake up early and then I have a list of various practices that I can do. And then um, I can choose from these practices to kind of cater my own personal menu of methods that will ground me and set me for the day. So these methods include, for example, meditation, journaling, reading a few pages and and one of my millions of psychedelic books that I haven't yet to read yet, Um, uh, playing my guitar, um, connecting with a friend. Uh, going outside for a walk in in the park near my house or going to a dance class or something like that, yoga, um, maybe some artwork, uh, praying, 
intention setting for the day. So just take choosing a few of these practices and uh, and really sticking to them and knowing that this is what I do first thing in the morning, no matter what, like before I open Facebook, before I open the emails, uh, before I jump into the text and the million other things that are just, just don't end. Um, before you get pulled down, you really pull yourself up and uh, just, again, ground down to, like you said, chop wood, carry water. Just remember who I am, why I'm here. This is what I need to do and take it from there. So the daily anchor methods is, uh, is one of the techniques that I really stress with my clients. You know, ultimately, it's, it's all about um, doing what, what you can sustain. Your, it's all about sustainability. Mm. So practices that are sustainable and for the long term. Mm. What do you think the minimum viable um, practices for like meditation or journaling? Say somebody can't, like they feel a block when they say, okay, I would love to write three full pages out this morning. Like is a half a page, like a good start and like, you know, just see what works for them at the time or how do you model that? I would say it doesn't even have to make any sense. Mm-hmm. I call it a paper purge. Mm. So <laughs> paper yeah. purge, whatever needs to come out, it doesn't have to be linear. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't even have to be complete sentences. It can be free association. Just whatever thought that comes to mind, you just purge it on the paper. Um, it's amazing what this technique does because, again, a lot of the, the processing comes when, uh, when, when we just are able to take all these experiences that we have stored in our body and in our mind and take them out into the physical world, if that makes sense. So all these thought, these ruminating thoughts and feelings that don't necessarily make sense, as soon as they're out of our minds, out of our bodies and into something that you can hold in your hand, they have turned to have a life of their own that is outside of your body. Mm. And it's a, it's a, it just takes a lot of the load off. So I wouldn't even say it has to be any length of, anything just as long as it comes out in one way or another i've personally found a lot of value in journaling um Mm -hmm. i've been trying to follow that model of uh like morning pages Uh, what was her name cameron Mm. maybe um Mm -hmm. the artist way it's kind of a really fascinating book and like artists have a lot of the same problems that psychedelic folk do so Mm -hmm. (laughs) um yeah yeah, it's, and it's I like to have I like to have a book that's I have a couple of three or four journals. One of them is dedicated just to journeys, mm. where I you know write the the what we call the cosmic log, everything mm. that <laughs> happens, that color, that shape, that being, that you know. So yeah, and then I went you know then I purged, then I did this, and mm. so I have I have a book like that, um, and I mark you know all the ceremonies I've had. I like to do that because it. It um, it really tells the story of my growth. Mm. Yeah. So a journal, even if you're not necessarily a writer, you don't have to to be a writer to to express your your thoughts and your your inner world. Yeah. yeah. My morning pages are chaos. There's no. <laughs> I don't even know that I could read it <laughs> if I tried. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's it's mm. you know anything right like. Uh, in, in breath work, we do art and then we, then we physically share. I think breath work could benefit from some sort of sustained integration practice. Uh, maybe that's like the only mm-hmm. thing it's really missing, but mm-hmm. how can we do that other than following up with folks one-on-one or webinars or something, or, or just having them come back to more and more workshops, mm-hmm. which might not be viable. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, well, one way to, what, I mean, if you're, was that a question that you want an answer no. on or <laughs> feel free, feel free. Okay. Well, again, and you know, if an integration is all about taking those insights that you've learned in altered states and really living them through meditation and breath work while you're breathing, if you want to go back in while you're sitting at home, go back in your mind to the places that you visited while you want breath work. I mean, if anything, I would find that to be, um, an activating practice that can take you back to that experience to and then you can relive it or if you want to continue working on it uh if there's anything that was left unresolved or if you you want to find out what else is behind that so that's one way to to integrate really is to do a, a mini meditation slash breathwork session at home mm. 
How do you have yeah. people do the breath work at home? Like 10, 20, 30 minutes of accelerated breathing or well you're the you're the breathwork professional aren't you but we i only i only ever advise one format which is funny <laughs> I, I always think about that i'm like you know should i do more short form should i give people take home pranayama practices but i'm just like uh here's my here's my expertise and it's just these workshops and mm. you know giving you a list of take home things that you might check out later on your own um I have a list of uh, of medita- YouTube meditations that I keep, and some of them involve breath work. Mm-hmm. And if individuals want to start with breath work, I, I give them one of these links, and then they can meditate slash breath work on that. Mm. Yeah, so that's you know a simple simple thing that I do. Just you know offer people resources to. Uh, to obviously to different sites, different, and you know, uh, websites of information, uh, communities in their area. I help them research um, practice integration practices or supportive practices that can be good for integration in their area. Um, you know, essentially is, is even if they're not called integration, as long as it's something that makes you feel good and helps you connect with yourself uh, and to your body, to your soul, to and helps ground and center you. It's completely an integration practice. Mm-hmm. Petting your petting your dog is an integration practice. You know, right. so. Uh-huh. Yeah, I guess I'll jump in and just add like how I do like my short form breath work. If like I'm feeling anxious or something's coming up, I'll usually just lay down on the floor and take a couple deep breaths and feel where that tension is in my body. And then I use my breath to like make it a little bit bigger and try and bring it to the surface and push it out. But you know, I also Mm -hmm. have a lot of this experience and um, it's interesting because I I just did a a research study for my for one of my research courses on breath work and I created like a 10 to 15 minute video with music and um, it, it was really interesting to you know, send that out and give instructions and then people being like, "Ah, I don't know. I like, I I didn't like it or I felt like really irritable. But for me, since I have that background, maybe I know how to work with that energy a little bit differently versus somebody that's completely new might be really uncomfortable. So it's always like tricky when I'm like, Hmm, how would I like really kind of teach like this short form breath work that I know Mm. from using like that bring it up and release it to somebody completely new and maybe that's just like a, a slower meditation of like just not trying to do that just using the breath to slow down exactly just just focusing i mean when i began meditating um and said my spiritual practices again just out of the blue and trying to find very simple resources youtube was a huge help for me um, so yeah, just even the matter of connecting to the breath and really noticing where, where it flows through your body is a type of breath work. Mm-hmm. Breath of fire yeah. is a type of breath work. Um, just accelerated breathing is a type of breath work, right? So I think if there's a, one thing, another thing that I really learned at the holotropic breath workshop at that conference was that it really wasn't about the breathing technique at all. Like mm-hmm. I was, it was just amazing to see how deeply you could go, or I at least, like I went super deep without even utilizing any type of technique it was all about the space that was created and the permission to let go right it was incredible it was the setting it was the music it was the people it was the fact that there was you know i had a partner who was sitting with me and made sure that i'd be safe so all about safety Mm -hmm. and permission so you know so creating the atmosphere at home um that where you will feel safe to be able to do your work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah that's crucial yeah definitely Mm. yeah the group process is really powerful in in mm -hmm. that format Mm -hmm. so same with psychedelics you know the whole idea behind the setting right set and Mm -hmm. setting it's it always goes back to set and setting yeah so the setting for setting for the home, setting for integration, make sure you have all your your little gadgets, your books, your yeah. your journals, your your prayer beads, your singing bowls if you need them. You know what, whatever makes you feel good. Again, a lot of times we, especially, I don't know how it is where you guys live, but in LA, which is such a a crazy town on so many levels, it's easy to feel ungrounded and. Um, 
you know, finding community, making sure that you, uh, your home surroundings is, uh, feels like a place where you can find sanctuary. And, uh, we forget how important these things are, you know? Mm -hmm. So really just going back to what matters Mm -hmm. without, you know, trying to impress anyone, finding friends that you can confide in and that you can be fully authentic with. Um, that's why I am so proud of the integration circles that we have here in LA. Um, you know, in the beginning, um, when when I did them as part of inner space integration in the beginning, now I run them as part of my own brand, which is a psychedelic integration coach. But in the beginning, we really thought that we had um, a responsibility to bring a lot of content and talk about different aspects of psychedelia. And, you know, we talked and talked and then ultimately like People, honestly, people just want to meet and talk. People just want to connect. Yeah. So um, I've really um, I've restructured the groups to include basically a few grounding exercises and, and just leave a lot of time for personal connection And because people just want to meet the others. By meeting right. the others, they are affirmed. They feel safe. They feel heard. They know that they're not alone. And again, it's all about relationships and that's again going back to integrate i think it was daniel mcqueen actually on that you had him as a guest he said a sentence on while in during his interview which i thought was brilliant community is the best form of integration Mm, it is yeah 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 Yeah. i was going back to just immediately going to say that too you beat me to it (laughs) yeah it's like yeah he's uh, he's a brilliant thinker for sure Mm -hmm. and uh Mm -hmm. It's it's really cool what he's done in Boulder. Yes, and you know if, if psychedelics again is all that's all about a return to wholeness. We you know our our spirits, you know whether whether we believe in in spirits or not. Uh, those who believe in in the idea of us being spiritual beings, uh, which for me is something that I I really. Um, really started following when I started. E- working with with the psychedelic substances was that if we are spiritual beings and we all come from the same source we will always yearn to to return to that wholeness so we will mm. we will always want, want to connect we will always try to connect with others a person that lives in solitude is you know that's usually usually causes a lot of illness you know mm. so just doing everything we can to create space for people to connect and come together mm-hmm yeah. On the topic of relationships, I know you touched on before we started recording uh, this topic of being in a visionary relationship. Uh, can you speak to that a little bit and what that is? We're Doc. Some people call him his students. Uh, he's my husband. He is a, a, a psychiatric pharmacist, is a professor, and he also uh, is starting to teach now courses about um, uh, uses of uh, various alternative medicines in, in to, to his students. And anyhow, Benjamin also works in psychedelic research and has a heavy interest in psychedelic research. We met at, psych- at Visionary Convergence, which was the psychedelic conference here in LA about a month ago, which, by the way, is an amazing place to be single because when you think about it, uh, um, if you really want to meet someone that has the same interests and passion uh, and and life purpose, someone at a conference like that is a great idea, a great way to, to connect. So Ben and I met at the conference and immediately knew that we wanted to be together. We complement one another in a very interesting way. So he's a scientist, uh, uh, obviously a very strong academic background, uh, wants to dedicated in, uh, in one way or another to to education and psychoeducation and um, with his interest in psychedelics that's the lens he brings to our relationships and I obviously bring the the more humanistic lens so we're kind of an interesting combination I think I don't know who it was but someone once and Roth actually that said oh you're like the Shulgins <laughs> because Sasha was a scientist and his wife my family colleges so we thought that was kind of cool um so yeah we were both you know with our different interests in the psychedelic world and both knowing that we really want to contribute heavily to the field and and do our part and kind of ushering in the the new age of consciousness 
and awakening and want to make sure that we're in service to those who are using psychedelic substances and um you know doing doing the work that we do not just professionally but also personally uh obviously we've both experimented in the past with with uh various types of medicines and you know doing our own personal and individual work and realizing more and more that um especially because we haven't been together for so long at all we've only been together for not even two years uh, but doing the the medicine work together has accelerated our our um, our connection and has deepened our connection in in so many ways because what the medicines do is they really strip away any uh, remnants of identity ego identity that that we we have cultivated over the years so you're really left in a very raw and vulnerable state before your beloved and. You know, I think both of us are lucky enough to to have partners that are we're both individually interested in and in personal growth and hold a lot of space for that in our lives. And um, you know, also both come with have a background of psychology uh, as he's in psychiatry. So we're both understand the need for uh, for human development and 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 hold a lot of a very strong space for that. So consciously, um, this is something that we're really trying to cultivate in our relationship, allowing one another the space to do their their growth in the way that they need. We're also very different in the way that we handle medicines, different capabilities, um, different uh, relationships with the substances. So um, well, really making sure that we're not necessarily... Like in the beginning, we really try to do everything together um, or just like I would really try to, you know, keep up with him on on his practices. And it wasn't necessarily right for me. So there was also a time where we had to make room for the idea that, yeah, we're two as much as we love each other. And we have the, this, uni this unity, um, this partnership between us. We're still two different people with two on two different journeys. Mm. So... Uh, yeah, just making room for that and allowing each other the space they they, they need for their to just go at their own pace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's just been a beautiful blessing in our lives. And again, just to share that that same purpose of wanting to serve others and to heal. And we have a, um, a dream one day to open um, or be a part of a, a healing retreat center somewhere mm. where we can both offer our gift and hold space for healing for others who need it. And yeah. yeah. And again, we just, we feel like we complement that each other in that way. Mm. That's great. Do you have a lot of teachers or know a lot of people that are in these type of relationships? I know like our breathwork teachers, they seem to complement each other and, you know, they have that retreat center and I've, I've always looked up to them like, man, that's really awesome. They do like all their, like this, this really deep work together and they have really great partnership and um, yeah, it's a really cool thing, but it, it probably also really difficult at times too, when you're going through these deep transformative experiences and needing to hold it for the other person and yeah exactly and you know this is something that we've you know very recently experienced we had a pretty ch we had a challenging couple of weeks um again when i was kind of deepening deepening my work and and you know felt like i i was on the verge of a few breakthroughs and so i didn't i didn't want to stop and got to a point where you know he told me straight up you know i think you're you're doing way too much it's taking over our lives Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting to be affected by it or home is starting to be affected by it. Maybe there's time for, uh, re, uh, <laughs> I lost my word. Anyhow, there was a lot of resistance, a mm -hmm. lot of resistance to, to what I was going through. And I really appreciated him for that, you know, because again, I felt like I was kind of, um, going full speed ahead and it was really good to have him reflect to me things that I wasn't seeing. And, and yes, to remember that, even though I am still, I am on my journey, I still have this precious, beautiful partnership that I do want to care for, and this is the main thing in my life. And 
with all due respect to to the medicine world and you know the the medicine spirits which I highly respect and follow and adore and dedicate my life to you know I still want to remember what the most important thing in my life is which is my love mm -hmm. my love to to uh, to my husband so I am lucky again to have to have him um, as a partner he's very solid and is able to to kind of ground me when when I need it so yeah yeah but it, def it, it is definitely challenging sometimes yeah 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 uh. Yeah, that's great. And I <clears throat> I think Joe and I both had a chance to talk to him a little bit at uh, the conference. And he seems like he's doing some really awesome things. It'd be fun to get him on the show sometime and talk to him. Yes, yeah. He's special. And uh, again, he's a, he's a nerdy scientist, so <laughs> he has a lot to talk about in that sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's why another reason why I feel so lucky to be in relationship with him, because again, in, in our field, you can imagine I have so many clients that get in touch because they have questions about uh, using substances be, um, while they're on psychiatric medication. Mm. Obviously, with all the research that's going on recently, um, you know, people are kind of opening their eyes and wanting to see how they can uh, perhaps utilize psychedelics to deal with their um, with various mental health issues. So I get all these medical questions that, you know, either I'm unable to answer, usually I'm unable to answer because I have a very basic, I have enough but basic knowledge of the way that the psychedelics work on our brain and on our body. But Ben is specializes in that. So I have him as a sounding board and he, he consults me mm. on... Uh, on the various cases that I have. And sometimes I just straight out refer my, you know, my clients to him to, so he can provide for them a pharmaceutical con um, consultation. So that's mm -hmm. another really awesome way that we join forces between us. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Do you ever get uh, people in like have relationship advice with some of the integration? You know, I know some people might have a really powerful experience and they're like, oh God, I need to like leave a relationship. Um, maybe instead of sticking through some of that difficult, em the difficult emotions that arise during the ceremony or whatever they were doing. Uh, advice on relationships. Well, if let's let, I'm going to try to generalize that. So people that come with cool. major life decisions that if they feel like they're, they need to make really big life changes, the idea is, or the, at least what I really try to reflect to them, that, yes, oftentimes, again, we, we just emerge from the psychedelic realm feeling like a new person, like we, have, we know everything we, we need to know and that it's, it's time to, to utilize the, the lessons. But for major life changes, it's always good to take a break for at least a couple of weeks and really let the idea percolate. Uh, and see what comes to the surface. And the idea is that if it seems like a good idea right now, then it'll still be a really good idea in, in two weeks or a month. Or a mm. month. So no making any major life changes, no divorcing your, your husband, no leaving your job, no relocating to the jungle to follow the plants, even though it's very <laughs> tempting. I feel called all the time. <laughs> but uh, really, um, again, grounding grounding, tapping in, seeing what's behind this desire for, or a call for change, uh, what is coming up, perhaps the call for change is because, you know, it's actually where the resistance is, that's, you know, because we, we don't want to face what we need to face, so it could be completely in the, uh, a wrong decision, so taking time, letting it percolate, not even necessarily speaking with anyone, because oftentimes, uh, if we speak to individuals who perhaps are, again, not familiar with altered states and, um, and medicines or, you know, have the, just their own agenda or bias around it. They can greatly affect us. Um, our neuroplasticity is ex extremely high in the, the couple of weeks that follow medicinal experiences. So we're uh, highly, the, the ability to be highly affected is even higher um, by others' opinions. So really trying to uh, keep things to yourself, doing the work around it in inner work, um, or again, consulting a professional if you feel like you need a sounding board uh, that you can bounce ideas off of, but not 
jumping ship and changing your whole life around. No. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. I'm curious what other projects you might have going on other than um, your in, your psychedelic coaching. I think you mentioned. Oh, some so many. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for asking. So many of them. Um, yeah. So obviously, I have my 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 private business as a psychedelic integration coach. I uh, recently decided to uh, hand over inner space integration to my partner, so I can focus more on on this project and um i run as i mentioned psychedelic integration circles currently in santa monica twice a month we have about between 10 to 20 people that show up every time and it's just phenomenal and um just always so happy to see the the quality of people that come in the the different voices different ideas we have uh, people that represent all different types of demographics all across the board, which I love that, different ages, um, uh, different professions. And so that's a really, a really cool meeting place where people also network. So it's almost like a mini conference in a way. Uh, I love holding that space. I also host an ayahuasca integration group where we specifically work with I um before and after ayahuasca ceremonies, uh, which is kind of like a, glo- a closed, similar to group therapy, but not really therapy because again, I'm, I'm a coach. Um, and that's uh, that meets on a weekly basis. Uh, there's also another series that we call, or I call the shamanic practices series, where I bring in different speakers that talk about uh, various shamanic medicines. So, so far we had an, uh, someone who spoke about hape, which is a shamanic snuff, which is, um, for me, an integrative practice. I use it every day in my meditation and that takes me back to ceremony. Um, I love using that. Um, that goes about monthly and then also other lessons that I teach. I also work with being true to you as a senior coach and uh, I work with addiction recovery clients. I teach classes with them and I do group coaching with them. Very soon I'll be starting to offer through being true to you um, a weekly group coaching call uh, on psychedelic integration. So it's a group that people can call in and and listen and and be a part of the group. And another amazing project that I'm super proud of and happy uh, to announce is the Los Angeles Psychedelic Science Symposium, which is the next psychedelic conference taking place in Los Angeles in February 2018. And we started this concept and just the idea started bubbling only about a month ago, but it's totally happening. We already have a few awesome speakers on board. It's being backed by MAPS. Cool. As well, uh, so I'm on the, on the planning committee, um, and this is one of the first announcements that we're making about it. By the way, so please spread the word. Uh, and another project is that I'm starting to lead retreats to Peru to a center called Niwe Rao. Dr. Joe Tafour, who gave a talk actually at the conference. He uh, is a family doctor who, for a few years, was one of the founding founders and the clinical director of Niwe Round Center, Niwe Round Center, which is a, an ayahuasca retreat center in Iquitos, near Iquitos in the jungle. And myself and my uh, my friend Glenice, who works at that center, we are taking a, a group to a retreat, but what's going to be different, there are many retreats going to Peru, obviously, but what we're trying to do differently is that we're actually offering as part of the retreat preparation and integration um, oh, great. sessions. So, Smart. Yes. So, yeah, you know, the whole idea behind, I almost feel like we barely talked about integration, but uh, the whole idea about integration is really being mindful to the what com- what happens before the experience and what happens after the experience. So if it's about creating the psychedelic experience from scratch. So the preparation phase, the session, and the integration phase. And for individuals who use psychedelics on a regular basis, you know, there's essentially there's the integration and the preparation become one stage too. So we're constantly integrating, constantly integrating. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, the ayahuasca will will get the uh, the preparation integration that it deserves because we don't mm. talk about that enough. 
right. without the integration, all these experiences just remain recreational experiences. The integration is where the work is. So I'm really mm-hmm. trying to to just like be of service to that and and remind people that the work is done after the ceremony ends. Sounds like you're up to a lot of different wonderful things. It's awesome. And where could people find out about that symposia that you guys are going to be hosting in Los Angeles? We're, we're putting, yeah, so far we are, we do not have a website yet. We will have a website very soon. Individuals who want to find out more information right now uh, can contact either myself of course, or uh, Brad Adams, Dr. Brad Adams, which is another incredible person that also gave a talk at the conference. And by the way, Brad has an organization here in Los Angeles called LAMPS, Los Angeles Medicinal Plant Society. And it's a group that meets on a, every month and uh, hosts speakers mainly about the academic, not only, but mainly about the academic uh, side of psychedelics just bringing in different people from the field to network um so people can also contact lamps for to find out more about the conference but we will we will have a website very soon cool any any um way people could reach out to you or find your website um sure it's uh www (laughs) psychedelic integration coach.com uh, I'm also on Facebook, the Psychedelic Integration Coach, trying to find my way through the Instagram world. Um, yeah, social media or my website. Uh, I'm currently in the process of also looking for individuals who want to learn more about integration. I'm hoping to expand my practice. I'm getting a lot of uh, requests, a lot more than I think I can handle on my own. And uh, I would love to to get new people under my wing so I can train them and and work and uh, and have them work with individuals who need integration work. So if any of you out there are listening and are interested in learning more about integration, lending yourself to a great cause, please reach out or just to say hi to. I love meeting new people and uh, just fascinated by by the beautiful beautiful intentions of our community and to you guys as well for doing the important work that you're doing. Again, there is room for everyone. There is room for for every voice out there. We each have something to say, and, and we're, each, we're each a different expression of consciousness. And mm-hmm. together, we're we're really painting this beautiful, beautiful canvas that you know, hopefully, in ten or twenty years, when all of these substances are legal, as they should be, uh, we will be able to look back at this time and really see how we each con- contributed to this amazing field and and do it with pride because yeah. we're awesome it's a cool <laughs> cool time to be part of all this for sure yep yeah yeah we are lucky and blessed yeah. yeah awesome well i think we're probably definitely over an hour at this point um thanks for coming on the show it was great chatting with you and i um, hoping you know we'll have you back on to see what you're up to in the future and yeah thanks so much for chatting with us thank you for having me you guys all the best to you and yeah see you at the next conference yeah